I thought I'd show you the finished version of the smart table before I take you through this video, which is the making of it. About a year ago, I saw a couple of videos on YouTube. I think one of them was a Russian guy and the other one was a Chinese guy who made something very similar indeed. This first video uh, is the Russian guy and his wiring that looks quite insane. And the next video is going to be the Chinese guy whose wiring is a lot more refined and you can see some of his PCBs and wiring here and how he goes about doing it. And from internet research, I found very similar things, uh, again, bought from China, and I'll include these in the links below so you can see exactly what was bought and where it was bought from. I purchased a hundred of these little units from China. They come with the PCBs, the linking wire, the copper wire for the proximity sensor and some LED strips. The power supply is just a 20 amp 5 volt unit from Amazon. I'm doing a test here in free air where you can see the copper proximity sensor and I'm finding they can trigger from about an inch and a half two inches away. This does reduce when you put some wood in between and I was going to make my table out of oak so I needed to just, uh, check to see how thick the oak could be and still actually trigger the, the proximity sensor. I think in this next clip you can see we've got 9mm MDF and I'm still hovering my hand over the wood without even touching it. So my assumption was here that I could probably go to 20 millimeters and still have a, a trigger in the proximity sensor. Just to confirm this, I made a test piece out of MDF from the same thickness as the oak I'd be using. Now I'd have loved to have bought a 6x900 slab of oak. It's very hard to get hold of that sort of thing. So here I'm using uh, some six to eight inch wide strips of oak that are about 22 to 25 mil thick. I'm gonna laminate all them up into one large panel that I can then put onto the CNC. I've now cut down the oak to approximately 900 mil long planks and had the idea to try and stabilize things by gluing these down to a, an 18 mil panel of MDF. The reason being is I had to do an awful lot of machining on this panel. And when I was gonna cut down some of the hexagons, I'd be left with approximately two mil of oak on the bottom. And I've seen before on some of the other videos, this panel becomes very sort of loose and floppy and it had no rigidity to it. And I could see a lot of breakages very likely to happen here. So the MDF would be stuck there for the whole of the machining process and then be milled off at the end. I constantly seem to have the habit of over tightening my clamps when making up a panel and end up creating a banana. So the idea here was adding a ton of weight and only doing the clamps finger tight to try and avoid that. I think I did to the most part, but later on you'll see that there was a few gaps underneath where I'd over tightened yet again. So now begins the process of actually machining this panel. Firstly there you'll see me just milling the, the base flat there's a few irregularities from the clamping. And now I'm starting to cut the hexagons into the board. The first part of this, you'll see I'm actually working from underneath. This is actually gonna be the, the base of the table. The top of the table is where the MDF panels glue to, which will be milled off at the end. The resin I ended up doing in two pours. I didn't have enough of the first resin I bought, which was Epidex, which was a deep pour resin, allowing you to pour up to about 20 millimetres. This resin here was just more of a top up. The first dye you see me putting in was an alcohol based dye. That gives a blue colour throughout the resin. And this powder here is a pigment, a mica based pigment, that gives it all that glitter and swirly effect that I thought might be nice. It was difficult to try and gauge how opaque to make the resin. It was one of those things where I didn't want the LED lights to be seen from above, 
but at the same time it couldn't be too opaque so that the, the lights didn't show through. So I pretty much tested this by shining my phone light through the pot of resin I've just made here. Resin does have a habit of finding any gaps and wants to leak everywhere. And you'll just see on the right hand side of this video a whole load of glue gun sticks that have been melted on the side just to prevent a catastrophic leak going everywhere and losing the whole lot of the resin. The resin was fairly cured in about 24 hours, but I did leave this for a few days just to make sure it was properly hard before the machining process. The first part was re-milling the base flat again, and here is the start of the process where I'm going to be milling out the hexagons just to leave a raised bit of resin and also some indents in the oak for the circuit boards and wiring. I'm using a four millimeter end mill here to hog out some of the oak that will be used for where the PCBs go and all the lighting. The hardest bit of this project was one of alignment. Once I'd started milling this table, it needed to go back in exactly the same position each time to ensure that the cutting was aligned. I mentioned previously, all this up until now is working on the underside of the table. The squares are where the PCB is going and around the edge of the oak circle is where the proximity sensor and also the LED light strips will be going as well. You can see the oak's been managed to be milled away from all the resin and that's so the light can transmit through. This is where the work starts on the top of the table. You can see here that the top is MDF at the moment and that needs to be milled off. It was actually very useful for the stability of the table. After a few passes, some of the oak becomes visible. And you'll also see as well where my over clamping caused a bit of an issue where the resin leaked from. I was pleased how this top turned out, but in the milling process, I'd reduced the thickness of the table down to about 20 mil. And I needed some more depth of the table to hide some of the electronics I was about to put in. So this here is where I'm putting some sides on there that will actually accept a base later on in the project. No matter how carefully I measure all my mitres, I always find the best way to do this is just to creep up on the cuts. Otherwise they always end up too long or too short. So. I took my time on this and then I'm just gluing it to the sides of the table. Once this glue had dried, there was a little bit of finishing required here to neaten things up and then an insane amount of sanding. I only went down to 240 grit on here because I was gonna be putting some polyurethane varnish on just to finish it off. The bottom of the table got only a couple of coats of varnish just to seal it, whereas the top of the table had about six or seven coats. And I quite like the Motip varnish, again from Amazon. I'm now turning my attention to making the legs for this table. I'm gonna make them out of oak again. I'm gonna mitre the corners to make them look chunky. I decided to set some resin hexagons in each leg as well for a bit of an accent to sort of match the top. But I think this was overkill now. And if I did this again, I would have probably just done simple oak legs. I think I was looking forward to the electronics most of all for this table. I work with wood a lot, 
but I do very little with electronics, so this was an exciting new area for me. That excitement quickly wore off. It became rather tedious because setting in all of these PCBs, doing all the wiring, making sure all the sensors and LEDs were in the right place was quite fiddly and I could only put in a couple of hours each day before I'd lose the will to live. So it pretty much took me the best part of a week to get all this side of it done. It was quite clear to me now in the other two videos I'd watched why this area on the footage had been sped up. Everything was very fiddly, very tight and very hard to do. Having done about a week's worth of wiring, this shot here, in my opinion, is quite a sight to behold. You can see all the individual PCBs, then you've got the black wire which is linking up the sensor, the coloured wires which are linking them all together. Uh, they're wired up in series at the moment and this was the start of my problems with getting this table sorted. Now this is where the pain started. You'll notice that although it works of sorts, there's quite a few false activations and you'll also see as well some very sort of dim red glows. These LED strips are RGB, which means they'll rotate through a whole host of colours. Now, seeing as the resin is blue, the red hardly shows through. So that's an area I have to address later, but at the moment, that's the least of my worries. I had communications with the chap I bought this from from China, and his English is better than my Chinese, but it was very hard to communicate. And I did a whole load of tests, grouping them together, wiring them in parallel, wiring them in series. And in the end, uh, he realised there was a fundamental problem with the PCBs. After several weeks of testing, the chap who actually made these circuit boards did realise that there's probably a fundamental error with them and he redesigned them. Uh, he sent me another lot of them for free but that did require me taking out all the week's worth of work I'd done and then get myself back to square one again. Back to square one was wishful thinking. I soon realised that the new improved circuit boards were actually circular in shape now, so I had to re-mill out the square into a circle shape. It did, however, have the benefit of having an integrated proximity sensor. So all these you can see on the side here are the old ones. And on my little test bench, you'll see the new versions. I tested these new sensors with different thicknesses of wood. This here is a 25 mil piece of MDF. And this is where I realized the limit of the sensor would be. But that was okay because my table thickness was approximately 15 mil where the sensors would be. So they were perfectly able to work on that. This is now take two on the wiring. Another laborious process, but at least I felt I was on the home straight now. I also took this time as well to try and rectify some of the issues I had with the RGB lighting strip. And I realized that if I short out the RGB cables, then I only get white light, which is exactly what I wanted for the blue resin so that the red didn't come through very dim. Soldering's not my forte and I had to do this 85 times. I made a few errors, but eventually got there. This was a position I'd been in before with everything fully wired up. I was a bit nervous to see it working, but I had done some testing and I was hoping this would actually work an awful lot better. 
In this clip, you can see everything working perfectly. There was a false activation on a couple of the LEDs down the bottom, but I'd wired everything up in series again, and I think there was an excessive power draw when operating that many LEDs at once, that just by dividing them into different groups, fixed that quite quickly. I was now on the home straight, and I was just tidying things up. I'd made an oak shroud just to cover some of the power pack and fitted a four meter lead so the table can be positioned in most places in the room. Now finished and seemingly working fine, I decided to set this table up in my back lounge for some long-term testing. I did notice the guy from Russia after he made his prototype. He started up a Kickstarter campaign and he was looking to sell these tables for $2,000 a piece. My initial thoughts were that was rather expensive, but after the effort taken to make this table, I can see where he was coming from. I'm not sure if he actually sold any of them or if the Kickstarter campaign went anywhere. So that's the table complete. It was quite a challenge from the electronic side of things, but I suppose that's half the fun of it. Looking forward to the next project.